Okay, thank you. So I'm Frédéric from Egaya. And in this talk, I'm going to, to talk a bit about the status of Mathema in Chrome. <coughs> so, well, mathematical layout is something really complex. And the original MathML specification was really huge. So the approach we followed since 2019 was to focus on a subset called MathML Core. Uh, so that we can more easily manage it, uh, we can better integrate it with the rest of the ecosystem. And uh, uh, one of the issues with uh, the legacy uh, MathML specification was also that it was lacking a lot of implementation details. Uh, the level of details was really bad. And by bad, I mean that, for example, um, the M security element, uh, the specification was just saying, okay, it's supposed to run the square roots. So with a bit of imagination, you can say that this redwood tree is actually implementing this uh, specification. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that was the monetary uh, redwood uh, metaphor. So now I'm going to talk a bit about, uh, well, I'm going to present a bit some demos and in order to reflect the diversity of uh, the Chromium community, uh, I've decided to pick some the most coming from different cultures. Um, so one of the things, the first thing we can ask was, uh, is it really necessary to have mathematical formulas? Can we just use words? So, well, to give an example, I decided to, well, I was preparing this presentation. I thought maybe I could consider the problem, the word problem by uh, Flaubert, which, uh, is more or less as follows. So we have uh, the number of Egalians given for different time. When I joined Egalia, it was more than Chrome's version number. On October 17, 2021, well, if you counted the uh, Egalians by group of two, you get one person left over, the same by three. If you counted them by five or seven, you got four left over. And uh, today, the number of Egalian is still less than uh, the capacity of Lincoln's room. So the question is, what is the age of the CEO? Uh, but then I was discussing with uh, Lauren yesterday and he mentioned maybe this is a bit too difficult. So I try to simplify this. Uh, instead, uh, I focus on a Chinese problem for the third century that some of you probably heard about. So we have the same situation where we know the number of Igayans on October 13, 2021. And we know the value modulo two, three, five, and seven. And we also know that it is less than two, 210. So the question is how many Egalian were there? Uh, I don't know if any of you have any idea. Nobody? Okay, so nine. nine? <laughs> That's really small. <laughs> when I joined Egalian, it was already 50, so yeah. But actually nine is a good thing because nine ends with uh, digit nine. And actually, all the solution end with digit nine. So that's a good point. Um, so I'm not sure I'm going to give the details, but uh, my point is really that uh, in order to explain this kind of problem and give the detailed solution, uh, it's really difficult to give it only with words. Uh, so we really need to have some more advanced notations, which were in that case invented by Gauss uh, for the modular arithmetic. Uh, anyway, so the, the solution is uh, 109, so you get the 9, <laughs> and um, yeah, and it's actually exactly the version of Chrome where we expect to ship MathML, so... <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the status is that we got approval from API owners, uh, the flag is already turned on in Canary, so you can already experiment it. And if everything goes as expected, uh, we'll get native MathML support in Chrome in, uh, next January. Mm, so uh, it's a quick digression. Uh, well, you can do it like the Ancien Grid and verify that Blink on 17 and Chrome 109 are actually using prime numbers, which I think is an interesting property. Uh, so, okay, so going back to the demos. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the Tablet BM one five oh sorry eight five one nine six. 
uh, which is actually not a new Android device, but uh, is this uh, clay tablet that you can see on the picture uh, coming from the Babylonian era. And this tablet is interesting because it's one of the oldest uh, problem we have, uh, mathemat mathematical problems. So it's basically as follows. You have a, a pole of a certain length L is placed against a, a wall. Then its top end edge is uh, its top end is shifted down by a certain amount, delta L. And the question is how far the bottom end of the pole has moved away from the wall. Uh, so again, this Babylonian problem is explained using only text, uh, even cuneiform text, and, uh, and it's also given the solution. But well, if you really given this to your high school to high school students. Uh, how they would solve this is basically to start drawing some schema, then place uh, different distances, and then use the Pythagorean theorem to express the solution with square roots and so on. So we really need this kind of uh, schema that are currently rendered with SVG plus MathML. And so I think that's uh, a nice thing. Mm, and I think that's uh, something that we can now get on electronic tablets too. So another demo that I like is uh, the problem from the Indian mathematician. Uh, so that's called the Chakravala met method. And the problem is about finding unknown integers x, y, uh, satisfying this simple identity x squared minus uh, n times y squared is equal to 1. You can find some example on this slide with different values on, of uh, n. And uh, yeah, you can verify these values, uh, this solution with your JavaScript console, or uh, you can try to find that with brute force search. But I guess what is really interesting for teaching purpose would be to actually have uh, this kind of program, which uh, an interactive program where you specify the value n, and you automatically get a detailed solution, the different steps of the algorithm with the detailed solution. Uh, so I implemented this, this with uh, JavaScript and it's generated mathematical equations. And uh, an interesting point here is that the non-trivial solution for 109 is actually too big that uh, you cannot check it in your JavaScript console unless you use BigInt, uh, which I also thought was interesting. Um, yeah, so to conclude, the demos uh, also have these uh, formulas that were published by Gauss in the beginning of the 19th century. And these formulas uh, well, show different aspects. So you can see they're using fractions, uh, radicals, uh, different function names, stretchy, uh, stretchy fences, uh, large operators, and they use very specific spacing rules and uh, script size and so on. So well, you have a lot of things to know about and to in order to render this complex notation. So I guess that summarizes a bit the uh, goal of this project, which is to be able, on the one hand, to run the, this kind of complex notations, and also integrate well with the rest of the with the rest of the web platforms. Uh, so, like I already mentioned, SVG, JavaScript, and I also used CSS, of course, to highlight the numbers. Mm, okay, so that's all for um, this uh, mathematical demos. Hope you enjoy them. Uh, now I'm going to move back to the achievements since May. Um, we're using some of the information we already provided in Blinkom 16. Yeah, so we have this uh, roadmap that we published in 2019, uh, which were a rough list of goals that we have for MathML, uh, a list of tasks and list of features to implement. And in the last Blinkon, uh, we mentioned that, uh, well, almost all, all of them were complete. Uh, we had some minor issues uh, that we don't plan to fix in the next, uh, or in the first release, sorry. But the main problem that uh, we mentioned and that we discussed in the previous Blinkon was uh, table support. Uh, it was really bad. We had some alignment issues and some breaking, uh, line breaking issues too. So, well, now this, this was fixed, so it's good. We think that now things are ready. Uh, you can see this uh, rotation matrix uh, from the CSS specification. Um, yeah, so, and 
in the last blink code, we also mentioned that there are other tasks that we are interested in. Uh, again, the thing was that we think that most of the things are ready, but uh, of course there are always some stuff that we need to keep an eye on, like in priority or security. I'm going to give more details in the next slide. So one of the problem, well, well the, rec the current issue is the lack of uh, pre-installed math font on some operating systems. Uh, if you don't have proper math font, well, you, you can still model some simple math equations, but if you want something like what I showed with the uh, Gauss formula, uh, you will basically get uh, bad rendering, uh, which is not acceptable for at least for people who are used to tech, for example. So <clears throat> I have two good news on this front. So the first one is that Apple released uh, last, uh, last month, they released uh, a new version of macOS, which has uh, some proper fonts to run the math math and the math equations. And also, um, there are some interesting discussion on the Notos and math tracker, where some people were interested in implementing the math related open type features uh, for this font. Yeah, so another thing that were reported by API owners during the Blink Dev uh, discussion. So intent to ship discussion, I mean, was uh, that documentation is of course really important if we want to release something and that new web developers uh, discover a thing and want to play with this. So, well, we have big, we have done a big effort to update the documentations as well as our rated data. So for example, the browser compatibility data. And uh, we wrote this gentle introduction to MathML uh, we also, of course, documented all the new math related CSS features. But maybe the most important point is that we switch the documentation to use MathML core as a reference uh, so that uh, users know that it is uh, the one thing to use. And the legacy features that are still implemented in Firefox or in WebKit, well, they are clearly marked as uh, legacy or deprecated or non standard. Um, yeah, another thing that was raised by uh, API owner was the uh, security part, uh, which is also an important one. So as you know, we have for this proposal for layout, we have some DOM feathers that try to detect uh, assertions or crashes. Uh, in the past months, we didn't get a lot of them, so but we still are able to fix them. Um, one of the DOM feathers is actually public, uh, so we contributed some patches to make sure it is up to date with respect to the MathML core documentation, uh, specifications, right? Um, then there is, so this is for done furthers, but uh, one of the limitations with that approach is that some uh, low level APIs that are used for MathML are not really exercised by uh, furthers. Well, at least it's really difficult to generate the proper things. Uh, basically you need some uh, you need to generate some specific Unicode code point for uh, operators, for example, and be sure that you have the font data, the open type fonts with the proper font data. So maybe it's uh, it's a bit difficult to reach with uh, them further. So one thing that we did was to um, actually rely on uh, in-process guiding fuzzing, uh, which allowed to more directly exercise the thing. But again, we didn't really find a lot of new crashes. Uh, the only report that we got was uh, a bug for the open type sanitizer for WAF2 fonts. Um, and finally, we also imported some existing crash tests from Mozilla, and we verified that, of course, they don't crash in Chrome. Uh, so if you see the glass half full, I guess we can say that the MathML support in Chrome is pretty stable. We didn't get any new security crashes or whatever. But of course, if you see the glass half empty, uh, maybe you can say that the fuzzing support or stuff like that is not good enough. So I'm happy to hear if you have any idea how to improve this for Um uh, Well, there is also this discussion about uh, compatibility to so CSS and HTML. Uh, for that one, we didn't make a lot of progress. Uh, so we have some things that are more or less stuck on what wing and CSS this working group discussion and Matt working group discussion. Uh, there is also all this kind of thing about interpreting uh, CSS properties like padding, border matching, width and height. Uh, we did some work for the specification, 
but sometimes there are still some inconsistencies with what we actually implement and what is in test. Uh, so that's something we still need to improve too. Okay, so moving to interability. Um, so this is the result of the web platform test. Uh, remember that when we begin, we began three, uh, some years ago, there were not a lot of tests. Currently, there are 2,700, about 2,700 tests. Uh, Chrome has a pretty good score, about 93%. Uh, but there are some MathML features with unclear spec status that are failing, that are causing failures, sorry. So I put, well, I extracted a list of some of them. Uh, which actually is related to what I just previously mentioned about the HTML and CSS compatibility. And I think in total, they represent 6% of the total test. As, I mean, the failures represent 6% of the total test. So if we were able to agree on these features or if we decide to remove them from the spec, maybe we can improve the score. Mm, we have the opposite situation for the uh, Firefox and Safari, where um, they implemented MathML, but uh, the new implementation details that are in MathML core are maybe not uh, yet uh, followed by them. So just to give one example, for padding, order, imaging, and out of flow, we have a lot of failures. Um, and also interesting metrics from uh, interpreters, uh, what we mentioned the other day was um, the browser compatibility data. Uh, so I extracted some of them that are related to MathML. And you can see that the result is pretty good again for the standard features in MathML core. Uh, the browsers implement all of them. Uh, I think Chrome already mentioned it, it's missing colon span and row span. And WebKit is missing, I think, uh, script level. But yeah, more or less have good interactivity for this part. Um, for Firefox and WebKit, you can see again that they don't have a very good implementation of the new CSS, well, math-related CSS features that we uh, expose. Um, and then we have also all this kind of uh, DOM, which is good. CSVG, there is only one test for foreign object, which is good also. But the bad part is about legacy MathML. Uh, so of course, for Chrome, we don't implement any of them. But for Firefox and Safari, there are still uh, some features that are here. Uh, we try to remove some of them from Firefox. Uh, for WebKit, it's a bit more difficult because Apple is not really willing to unship existing features. Uh, so for now, we're only experimenting this stuff under the flag. Okay, so, and just to conclude about inequality, um, I'd like to mention that we have done some work in Chrome, in WebKit and Firefox, and we plan to continue working on that. And that's all, so I guess we can move to questions. How's the accessibility of MathML in this implementation and the plan for future accessibility support? Yeah, so uh, good question. So well, I think I mentioned this in a previous BlinkCon, but for this one, I didn't I only give the update from May. So well, for accessibility, uh, Apple had implemented some, uh, uh, I would say, accessibility API uh, for Mac. Uh, so that's what we implemented in Chrome too. Uh, we had the same for Linux about ATK. We also implemented the same, well, not the same, but the one that was existing for ATK. Uh, but for Windows, we I don't think there Microsoft any, has any plan, or maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't see anything about the uh, uh, a platform API for uh, for Windows. So for now, we are just relying on well uh, an existing API, which is exposing just. Uh, the MathML DOM tree, and then screen reader do whatever they want with this DOM tree, mm -hmm. uh, which is of course not ideal for navigation and this stuff, but that's what we are for now. 
Uh, for Android, uh, I don't have any idea what's the plan. So for now, we don't expose anything on Android. Uh, this is only for the native support. So I know that some people are also doing some more work to extend MathML and uh, add some semantics to it and maybe improve the, the way screen reader can read it. But uh, yeah, so that's basically. Okay, we have another from the room. Um, I'm just wondering if you have any feedback on adoption by kind of popular mathematics software packages like MATLAB, Mathematica, in terms of being able to export content mm. um, as MathML. So yeah, so I know Matt, uh, well, some of these software are actually using MathML, I think. So they're able to generate MathML, but personally, I didn't, I don't know if there is any feedback. Maybe some of them are part of the working group. Uh, Brian, maybe you know more about this? I mean, we've had a lot of participation in the community group and the working group. We've done uh, also a bunch of outreach. There's a huge community of uh, tooling around this, just like there is for SVG, right? Like, um, so uh, mostly I think that the things are um, like updating a few definitions and a bunch of that work has already been done so that they output uh, sort of in the preferred MathML core way as opposed to the legacy way that, um, you know, used some other approaches for things that didn't really align with the platform. They weren't well aligned. I have another one from the room. Okay, uh, okay so, um, well, uh, the whole project of uh, trying to uh, trying to get Chromium to ship uh, MathML again uh, started with legacy layout and then was ported over to LayerNG uh, as LayerNG was being developed. Has uh, MathML uh, influenced Lay LayerNG in some way or driving the, the, the development of LayerNG? Uh, so that's a good question. So well, it depends. I'm not sure if say, we did a lot to move uh, layout ng things in layout ng, but at least I can give you two examples. Uh, well, one of the things is uh, what we discussed again in previous BlinkCons about stretch operators. Uh, you know, stretch operators, we have an issue where that uh, we cannot provide uh, exact uh, min max uh, width for them. So we only have to give an approximation. Um, and I find it interesting because, uh, well, currently we have still have this issue in layout ng. But for example, last week in the WebKit contributor meeting, I think Alan gave a presentation where they, where they were mentioning they are rewriting the layout and doing a different approach that doesn't need to use uh, min max uh, computation. They are not doing uh, lay, uh, basically a layout for min max computation. And we also had the same discussion with uh, Chrome people. I um, mean, the layout team, uh, that they have this idea of experimenting a new approach where they would perform layout in order to compute min max weights. So I think there are some things that is interesting here. Um, probably we would have to, uh, we should have discussed this before and maybe we would have the idea of uh, using this layout because I think the, um, using layout for min max weights would be very useful for MathML. So that's something that can be interesting. Uh, the second example, uh, is everything that you mentioned that in the past we had, uh, well, actually we didn't have any legacy implementation for MathML. Uh, so if legacy is used, basically, uh, you, well, the math MathML formula is just poorly rendered. Uh, that's actually very similar to what we have for C the CSS lay layout API. Uh, so the interesting thing is, uh, well, for MathML, we really want uh, all, the, all the layout to happen with uh, the new layout ng and not with the guest layout, otherwise we have a problem. And when we were trying to analyze which use case are failing with MathML, we actually found exactly the same thing that was found by the layout ng team. So we have uh, SVG foreign object was missing. Uh, the multicolon, I think, was used on Wikipedia uh, for the references. And sometimes people were putting formulas inside references, which is inside multicolon, so that was failing too. Uh, our printing was failing. That was a discussion with API owner. 
So, well, I'm not sure the fact that MathML needs that was really pressing <laughs> I don't know, Google developers to actually work on this, but I guess we were able to provide some feedback. I know sometimes we also got some further reports with uh, MathML and, for example, multicore or this kind of thing, which uh, were detected by MathML. And actually, exactly the same crash could happen with uh, using CSS Alert API. So, I guess that was maybe useful. And the foreign of um, the SVG friend object, I guess, was implemented because we were asking this for MathML too, as I demonstrated in the uh, Babylonian demo. Rick, go ahead. First, congratulations, uh, Fred. It's a huge accomplishment to, to get this to intent to ship. Uh, thank so thank you for all your work on it. Um, uh, on the adoption question, have you added a use counter so we can kind of well, all watch on Chrome status as, as the web starts to use MathML more? Uh, in Chrome, I don't think we have one, uh, but in Firefox, I know they have a use counter. Uh, but I think the thing is that it's used basically on Wikipedia. <laughs> so yeah, but you get a lot of things. But even if by default on Wikipedia is uh, displayed by CSS, it's replaced by SVG image or PNG image. So it's actually in the source code. So we have nothing in the source, but it's actually not displayed by default. So. Uh, the use counter of Mozilla is basically <laughs> counting them, even if they are not longer. So, but for Chrome, maybe we could have one, but I don't know. Brian, go ahead. Yes, yeah, it's, it's an interesting question, like um, because it is a, a niche, right? <laughs> um, it, it's not like um, you know, uh, maybe like Twitter or Facebook is probably not going to uh, use a lot of MathML in their code or something. Like lots of lots of things that people, the average person goes to all the time. Um, but uh, for education, or I know I've thrown this out a lot of times, like if, heaven forbid, there were a pandemic and we wanted to share information that involved math, uh, maybe it would be really good to be able to share mathematical text. Um, so I, I think like my question is, is related to that, which is um, there, like today prioritization is like not exclusively, but in large part uh, vendors uh, have a responsibility to um, manage prioritization of these things and like identifying those things and their importance is um i mean it's no easy task right it's very very hard uh who's to say that this thing is the thing that we should focus on or anything um but it does seem to me that um there are three um parts to the web platform uh there's html Okay, you could say HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but I mean, in terms of markup languages, the HTML specification since HTML5 has included SVG and MathML. Um, and both of those things are like weird also rans that um, don't get the attention or the alignment that the other ones do. And um, I personally think it's really important for us to. Uh, like fix that and make it so that we have one platform that moves forward together that we make them increasingly less weird so that like you know a rising tide for one lifts the others too um and i was wondering like if i, I suppose this isn't a question for fred as much as the, the rest of the room is like how, how can we how can we do better with that um Like just as as an example, um, until we took up this effort, um, if you just tried to grab an element and say dot style background color blue, it would throw in MathML. Like, that's weird, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, that's pretty well established. We know what nodes are and elements, and like, um, how, how do we make sure that we allocate some priority? toward at least 
unweirding and and making one platform i guess is my question or also does anybody just fundamentally disagree that that's a good premise <laughs> No, I suspect nobody disagrees, but also we're about running out of time. <laughs> so thank you, Fred. Thank you.